Art Deco, the, the, the god of our, of our industry. This is what I kill for. We want this, as antique dealers, this is what we want. So if you have jewelry that looks like this, that was not bought a month ago, where it might be a reproduction, but if it was grandma's, and it really is grandma's, you probably have a great piece if it looks something of this nature. Everyone buys jewelry today because the price of the gold has hit such record levels and uh, diamonds are higher than ever also. So take your jewelry to, to a local jeweler and have him give you a price. That, that would be the, the best thing. And of course not sell it because you want more than one offer on your jewelry. If you're getting all, like I said, similar offers, then all of a sudden you get that one bang offer that's a lot better than the other ones. Take it. If you like the person and you feel they're trustworthy, that's maybe who you should work with. If you have a bad feeling or you get a little creepy feeling, I would leave. I wouldn't hang around. What about just the scrap jewelry we have? What should we do with that? Well, the scrap jewelry is easy because the scrap jewelry is just by weight and that's easy. One guy offers you 1,000, one guy offers you 1,030, one guy gives you 1,060, you take the 1,060. So that to me is pretty cut and dry. Let's say, for example, the gold of the day is $1,600 per ounce. $1,600 per ounce represents pure gold. Gold that we have make jewelry with is 14 karat, mostly 18 karat, even 10 karat. 24 karat is too soft for jewelry. It, you have to realize your 14 karat is 58.5% pure. So unless you have a bullion, a 24 karat bullion is the only way that per ounce price will work for you. It's just a matter of shopping to a few places, getting your best offers, and taking the best offer. If you feel that the jewelry is older, you might want to go to an antique shop or an antique-oriented jewelry business because they will pay you more for an antique piece than a modern shop will. Well, this is a 1940s bracelet. They call it a track bracelet because it resembled the tracks made by the tanks during the Second World War. These are very collectible. This is pink and green gold, and people love these bracelets. And so when you sell that, I'm not going to buy it from you as a piece of scrap jewelry. I can sell them. People want them. So I'm going to buy it as a piece of collectible jewelry, as opposed to a rope chain or a herringbone chain. Filigree, Art Deco, Calibre little sapphire stones going around the centers and the sides. Um, handmade, platinum usually, and um, very white diamonds and jewelry, and a lot of little colored stones getting mixed in. This yellow gold Victorian stuff, it appeals to a certain crowd. This is a 1950s jewelry. It's a little, not as soft as the Deco. The Deco jewelry is a little softer. You look for signatures. You look for it. Tiffany and Company, Cartier, VCA, which is Van Cleef and Arpel. I would always leave my jewelry in my visible sight. I would never leave the jewelry out of my sight.